Hey guys, what's going on? This is Matt here and welcome to a tutorial on how to add in a teleporter to your map. So this teleporter is very similar to the one in Kino. So you have a main pad and you have the link pad and you know you just have to link them together and then you get to teleport. Um, typically it's like a some sort of uh, pack-a-punch room. Um, you can obviously put whatever you want in that room, uh, but it'd be some sort of temporary room and then you'll be teleported back to the main map um, to a, a place you know of your choice. So what makes this a little bit different is I've scripted it from the ground up. So uh, pretty much everything that I could think that people might want to customize uh, is customizable, uh, you know, cooldown time, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's, it's set up with that in mind, uh, nice and easy to change. But what's a little bit different about this is the actual terminal that you have to interact with, the actual sort of keypad thing. Um, it has lights on it, so that they, they, you know, they, um, they basically come on at different states. Um, you know, for like green light to mean it's ready, red light to mean you know it's cooling down, um, and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more interactive. So first of all, what we're going to do is download the actual uh, content itself. You'll find a link in the description down below for that. Uh, we will right click and extract here. So now we've got that, we're going to go into this folder. I'm just going to drag and drop this over into the Black Ops 3 root directory. I'm just going to replace the files because obviously I've already got it all installed. Okay, so what we need to do now is actually add in the, uh, the scripts to our map um, and all the content for sounds and whatnot. So what we're going to need to do is go over to user maps. We'll go over to your map name. In this, uh, in this case, I'm using a test map, so ZM test. We'll go into that. We'll go over to scripts, ZM I'm going to select my map name.gsc. Okay, so in here, we will be adding a one line of code. Um, all this will be in the description as well, so you can copy and paste it nice and easy. I'm just going to put that into there. So this is going to be pulling in uh, the scripts into the map that we need. So let's save that. That's what we need to do is sort out these sounds. So back over into our map folder, we'll go into sound, zone config, and open up this map name.szc file. Open up that. Uh, yours, of course, will look a little bit different depending on what content you have. But all we're going to do is copy and paste this. And we're just going to put it after the last one. So we've got this uh, this one here. And now we're just going to make a new line and paste uh, our uh, SZ, uh, SZ, CSV file, sorry. Uh, into here uh, just before these uh, two ones at the end. So it's making sure the um, all the characters here are all where they should be. We can save that. And so what we need to do is go into our zone file. So go over to the map um, folder, go to zone source and go over, open up our zone file. Well, I already had it open, sure thing. Uh, now we're going to add one line in and this is going to be basically bringing in all the other um, scripts that we need. So we'll go add in that one line, save that, and then that's basically set up on the uh, on the script side of it and for the sounds. What we need to do now, of course, is go into the actual map uh, and add in the actual uh, prefabs. So go open up the launcher, open up our test map, give it a second where it all loads. So to a reload my prefab browser. So prefab browser, if you don't have it, you can just right click up here and uh, find it in there. What we're gonna go do is go down to ZM, program 115 and teleporter, no, teleporter. And in here you'll have, you'll have all the prefabs that you need. So the way I'm gonna be setting this up is I'm gonna have two pads in here. Um, this will be my teleporter sort of temporary room. In this case, I've got the packer punch in there. That's typically what people put in there, I guess. Uh, and then everything else will be adding uh, as required. So let's say we will start off with the teleporter pads. So we're gonna go for teleporter main pad, drag and drop that in, and teleporter link pad. So these are pretty much, as the name suggests, you've got the main pad and then you've got the one which you have to go and complete the link to. Uh, I'm just gonna position these to be on the grid a little bit better. There we go. Now. Before we move on to the next prefab, we need to uh, make it so the player can actually see it through the glass. So at the moment, you'll notice, if I just go underneath the glass a little bit, you'll notice the actual floor 
uh, blocks the player's view from seeing inside. So all we're going to do here is really quite easy to do. Um, and of course, you know, you'll do this differently depending on the locations that you put the pads in. Uh, I'm just going to cut the floor um, around the teleporter. And all I'm doing this for is, it's the way I do it anyway. Um, I cut it like so. Then if I just select the pads and hide it, so just click H. You see we've now got these, uh, these squares, right? All I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a diagonal cut on each one. And each corner. And then the middle of it, I'm going to just delete. I'm going to just copy and paste this one back over. So I don't need to do it the same. Copy that over. So all we've got now is we've basically got a hole in the ground. That's all I was doing there. Just making a hole in the ground, which is conveniently just big enough for the teleporter. So now you can see we are able to see through what was previously the ground. And we can now see into here. Uh, you don't have to worry about the zombies going over here. Because if I use my filters and I'm not used to having it that wide. Um, you see I've set up a series of clips. Um, so the zombies do in fact um, walk over this and you know you do in fact you know kind of walk over the arch of the glass. So everything's set up so you will actually know that there's actually a hole in the ground but there is just so we can see uh, inside. So make sure you do that uh, otherwise you know you won't be able to see through the glass. So that's that set up, that's the teleporter pads themselves. Next what we need to do is set up the uh, the actual sort of this temporary room. So all we're going to do here is you go go down to teleporter room position. I'm just going to drag that over. I'm just going to be placing four of these. Very important that there's four. There's one for each player. And this is the locations that each player is going to spawn at. Um, when they teleport to that temporary room. Next what we need to do is actually add in the zone for this. So of course when they teleport here they will normally um, die instantly but in this case obviously you know we want them to stay alive so i'm going to drag in the teleport uh, room zone oh that's why i can't see it i've got it i've got the filter on i'm still put the volumes back on there we go and i'm just going to be positioning this to be in the middle what you're going to do here now, you'll right click, go to prefab, go to stamp prefab, and that's going to make it now so you can you can uh, basically adjust this to however you like. The reason why I put this into a prefab is because there are some KPPs on this, which I didn't want to have part of the video. I wanted this to be as easy as possible. Um, so all you need to do, as I say, just drag and drop that in, stamp the prefab, and then you can customize it however you like. Um, the prefabs are all set up, so the script will have no issue. Um, doing what it's supposed to do, just to sort of you know, just to take out a, a potential issue there. So I'm just gonna uh, put this back to how it was um, for this area because it's perfectly fine as it is. And now we've got one last step to do. I'm just gonna filter the volume so I can't see them. Um, they are still here. I just can't see them right now. And now there's one last step before. Well, I guess two last steps. We're gonna need to now put in the black box into the map. Now, all this does is we'll put this somewhere outside the map. So this, this needs to be somewhere that the player cannot see. Um, you can put it underneath the map, wherever you want. Um, all this needs to be, though, is outside of the map, as I say. And what this is going to be is when the, te when the uh, teleport is actually in action, you know, so when the player is actually being moved uh, between locations, um, this is that swirl that, that, you, uh, that, that you'll be able to see on your screen. Um, I'll show this, obviously, in game when we test it in game. Uh, but this is that swirl. So each of the players will be here and the swirls, like the swirling effect, uh, will be played in front of the player. So now then, for the actual final um, step of this, this is going to be now where the players end up um, after doing all the teleporting sequence. Um, I'm going to put the players back onto the pads. So I'm actually going to teleport the players over onto the link pad. Um, that's how Keynote works at least. Um, but you can put these wherever you want, um, as long as that zone that they teleport back into will be active. In this case, it's the starting area, so it'll be perfectly fine. So you just need to ensure the player has already opened up that area.
Um, otherwise, you know, the players will die. So we're going to go to teleporter final position. Drag and drop that in. I'm just going to rotate this just so the arrows are pointing towards the center of the teleporter because that's where I want the players to be facing. And I'm going to do pretty much the same as what we did to the teleporter room one. I, I'm going to be placing four of these and these are one spawn point for each player. So you only need four of those. So we've got two pads, uh, one being the main one, one being the link pad. We've got the teleporter temporary rooms. So, you know, the, the pack-a-punch room, I guess you could call this. We've got four locations, one for each player. We've got the black box. We've got just, just one of those um, out of the map. And then we've got the uh, the respawn uh, points when, when they come out of the teleporting sequence back into the main map. And of course, we've got the zone um, over in the teleporter room, which is going to be handling it, so they don't die as soon as they as soon as they exit the start zone, they are that they're still alive. So that's pretty much it then. That for that. What I'm going to now do is quickly go over some of the customizable options, um, just so you guys know how to customize it should you wish to. Um, so we're going to go over into our root directory, go to share, go to raw. I'm going to go down to scripts zm and it's probably in the bottom uh yeah so we got zm p115 teleporter.gsh if we open up that um i have actually set all these values to be what i expect you'll probably want them to be um just so you don't have to edit these but if you want to feel free now it's going to be the top section here that we're concerned about so of course we have the teleporter cost how much it is to buy um each time um the comments here do sort of describe what it does uh, we've got the cooldown time so this is this is going to be 60 seconds uh, between uses the player is going to have to wait uh, we have the teleporter room duration so the player in this case will stay in that teleporter room um, for 30 seconds is the power required we've got true here if you want to set this to false then that means that when you first load into the map the teleporter will be active immediately you don't need to turn on the power before you can use it of course you'll still need to, to link them together but you don't need the power required and this teleporter hum um i've set this to true and this is when the teleporter is active um, and it's ready to be interacted with uh, this will be this will be like a, a pretty faint hum coming from the actual pad and that's just to make it feel a little bit more alive uh, feel free to turn that off uh, set this to false if you want to um, i just think it's quite nice to have um however you you know however you want that so the last option, which you're probably not going to be customizing at all, um, this is just if you need to. Um, if you have changed the name of your start zone, um, so your starting area to anything other than at start underscore zone, um, by default, this is what it is. If you have changed it, this is where you need to put in the name of it, just because the other zones do rely on this. Um, if you haven't changed that, you don't need to be changing that line. Um, you, you you know you've only got these options up here to be changing um, if you want to and um, if that makes no sense to you then you're then you've got nothing to worry about because you likely haven't changed it in the first place so now we've got all that sort of you know um explained um that is pretty much it now so what we now need to do is go over into our launcher uh compile um do the lighting and link the scripts and then i'll see you guys over in game once this is finished compiling um, and I'll show you guys an in-game test of uh, sort of how everything works. Okay, so over in-game, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and grab a wall weapon before I start, just so I can kill these zombies should I need to. So as you can see, there's no, you know, there's no sounds or whatnot coming from these. You know, I've got you must turn on the power first because you know you want the power to be turned on. You can see through the glass nicely. I'm going to go and turn on the power. The teleport pads are going to be lighting up. Now you might not be able to hear it very well, but in fact, I'm just kill these zombies. There you go. You might be able to hear that very, very faint hum. Um, it's like an electrical sound. Um, you know, we kept that option on. So I'm gonna go up to here. I'm gonna go and press F to initiate a link. That's gonna make a sound. And you can see now the middle light is now flashing. To indicate a link is in place, we'll go and complete the link. It's gonna, that's really loud. We're gonna change that to green. And now we're gonna, well, I'm gonna get the zombies away. 
as soon as zombies are, we can still walk over it. And then we're, I'm going to go and teleport, and the zombies will, in fact, get killed on the teleporter. There you go. That was really loud. I'll lower the volume of the video. It was too loud. Uh, but yeah, you can see the zombies uh, got killed uh, at the pad. Um, Okay, there we go. So as you can see, we've got teleported back now. Um, and the zombies, um, if they're around the pad, they will actually get killed. Um, so yes, if there's anything on this pad when you do teleport back, um, they will be killed. Um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, you can see the red light is now on to indicate that it's cooling down. So I'm just going to wait a minute uh, for it to finish cool down. Then I'll show you guys it changes. Okay, so as you can see now, uh, it says press F to initiate link. It's gone back to orange. Uh, and of course, you know, that'll start flashing once we initiate the link again. Uh, and it's a, it's a nice cycle, so you can do this as many times as you like, uh, and it'll, you know, it'll behave the exact same way each time. So hopefully this has, uh, this has helped you guys. Hopefully, you know, it's, uh, it's as customizable as you guys want. Um, but yeah, um, of course, any issues, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and I'll reply and you know, help the best I can. Uh, and obviously, you know, I'll leave any pinned comments uh, should I need to. Uh, but yeah, other than that, guys, hopefully uh, you like it. And uh, catch you guys later. Bye for now.